And joining me now from a secret bunker is the author of the New York Times bestselling book, Liberty and Tyranny, a conservative manifesto, which has been now 12 of the last 13 weeks, number one on the New York Times list, 800,000 books sold, over a million in print. I call him the great one. Mark Levin is here. Thank me. How am I? Fine, thank me. <laughs> Which, by the way, is signature on your radio show. Mark, look, in all seriousness, and I want to get into some specifics, and we have some time to get into it with you here tonight. You know, this is really, if, if not the biggest conservative book of the year, maybe even the decade, um, why do you think this book has resonated to this extent? These numbers are unheard of in the book business for the most part. Because I think the American people are fundamentally liberty-loving people. And what's going on in this country is really <coughs> anti-liberty. The president, uh, you know, they just put Bernie Madoff away for life. The president's policies are Bernie Madoff times a thousand. Uh, he is a, taking a wrecking ball to this society. The American people love this country. They love its institutions. They revere the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. What the president is peddling is something utterly foreign. Uh, he, uh, he's dragging us into what de Tocqueville called a soft tyranny. And really, I don't know what the limits on the power of the presidency are anymore. You know, they used to call Bush an imperial president, which was ridiculous. <coughs> this is a real, live, imperial president who wants to dictate everything from light bulbs to what medicines you get to, uh, to student loans and credit card interest rates. He doesn't have the constitutional authority to be doing all these things. Mark, but I, so do I, think the, I think the public agrees with us. Well, I sense the public is beginning to turn on all of this, and the polls seem to back this up. For example, more Americans now see the Democratic Party as too liberal. Now, Mark, he ran sounding cons as conservative as he possibly can. He, he ran, Mark, saying, well, if you make $250,000 a year, you're, you're not going to see your taxes go up. Well, cap and trade is going to raise everybody's taxes. They're talking about a, a value-added tax. They're talking about tax, uh, taxing employee benefits for health care. So clearly, the numbers now show that the public views the Democratic yeah, he lied. Party. Well, he lied. That's one. Way. Yeah, he, he did lie. He did. Matter of fact, uh, he's taken this page right out of Saul Linsky's rules for radicals. Saul Linsky essentially said, <coughs> "Look, you got to sound like you're for the middle class. You got to act like you're from the middle class, and then you destroy the middle class." The fact of the matter is, most of us have jobs. But we're concerned about keeping them, given what he's done to our fiscal and monetary policy in this country. Most of us have life uh, health insurance and we like it. It's not a question of helping those who don't have it. He wants to destroy the health care system that most of us like. Well, the, uh, he's in bed with the NEA and against the children in the public school system. He is the purest statist ever to sit in the Oval Office. I agree. But all right, so now the, the numbers show, though show that the public is viewing, and I still think we're a center right country. This is the same country that elected Ronald Reagan with 49 states. Uh, although, obviously, things change. Demographics change, et cetera, et cetera. People have discussed that at length. Here's the question. If more people see the Democratic Party as more liberal than the last time that happened was November of 1994, and we know what happened then. That's when Newt Gingrich came to power. What does this mean politically as you look into your crystal ball? Here's the little secret conservatism now is on the ascendancy. The political pundits, the experts don't see it yet. It's on the ascendancy, not just because of the popularity of my book, not just because of talk radio, not be just because of the, the repulsion of, of the extreme radicalism of this president and this Congress, and, and they're lurching so fast and so hard to the left. But people really do want to keep most of what they earn. You know, they're concerned about other people, but they don't want to go broke over uh, government entitlement programs. They're very concerned about what's going to happen to their children with trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars in debt being created in a period of months. They're very concerned about this phony cap and trade, which would give the EPA authority over your homes and your house and your toaster and your light bulb. They know that, uh, that when they wake up in the morning, they love this country. They know they're blessed to be here in the heart of liberty. They know that they work hard and the government should not take 40 or 50 percent of their income. And Obama stands for all of this. He stands for all the wrong things. And I think the American people are picking up on it yeah, now. You know, I, I went to a wedding this weekend and 
almost every single... I thought you were married already. No, I am. It wasn't my... <laughs> oh, all right. It wasn't my wedding. And by the way, you look good with yes. makeup. I just want you to know for the record. And, uh, Thank is that... you. I, I knew you would notice. Is, yes. that, is that bunker underground or is it uh, above ground? <laughs> <laughs> well, there are different parts of it. I have a uh, lair downstairs. That's underground. But I'm up ground right now. All right. But in all seriousness, Thanks for asking. All, all seriousness, at this wedding, everybody that I talk to seems to fear the America they grew up in is, is being systematically torn apart. Not just on economic right. issues, the ones that you just listed off. I often talk about them. Talk radio talks about it. Fox News talks about it. But similarly, you know, on national security, the view that we're unilaterally disarming, that we don't understand the nature of evil, that this isn't the same country that, you know, once beat back fascism and Nazism by supporting this, this guy that wants to start or establish a dictatorship in Honduras. Your thoughts on national security? Well, look, what kind of a president denounces Israel, which is basically just trying to survive in the middle of a hellhole, and on the other hand, plays uh, footsies with the Iranian uh, regime uh, that is an illegitimate, terrorist-loving regime. What kind of a president does that? What kind of a president jumps to the fore, says we're not going to get involved in the uh, sovereignty of countries, does it immediately in Honduras when the Castro uh, Chavez Marxist uh, lightweight, who they threw out of that country, defied his Supreme Court, defied his constitution, the military removes him, the Congress there puts in place the head of the Congress, it's not a military coup, and yet, and yet takes the same position as Castro and Chavez and, uh, and Ortega. This president has some very bizarre and alien viewpoints uh, that were, that, that were, you know, he was indoctrinated with, and now that I, I believe he, he really believes in and, and, uh, and advances. He is a, uh, he is about as, as left-wing and about as radical as anybody ever to be in the Oval Office. Mark, this book is the modern-day equivalent of A Conscience of a Conservative by Barry Goldwater. Twelve out of thirteen weeks, number one on the New York Times list. Um, I gotta tell you something. It is a phenomenon. It is a call to awaken those in the uh, Obama mania hypnotic state. It's a great book. Uh, no kidding around. You're a great friend. Congratulations on the success of the book, your radio shows, gangbusters, and thanks for being with us. Well, thank you. And uh, we sent a copy of the book to the president. Maybe he'll read it. Uh, I, really? You think so? I hope maybe, so. Maybe he won't. Well, but he, said he, he said he wanted to have a beer with me. I offered to pay for it, and he wouldn't uh, take me up on my offer after he invited me. Right. Yeah, God bless us. Thank you. Well, I'll take him for a hamburger. All right, take uh, By care. the way, why do you ask your callers what they're wearing all the time? Because uh, I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, uh, it's always fun. Mark Levin, the great one. And coming up, we, to we told you.